it's Pebbles and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is having a great day. Finally, this is my first episode on my wedding series. So congratulations to any of you that are watching this and you're just newly engaged. I wish you all the best. This is an exciting time in your life. You're embarking on a new chapter of your life with the, the one that you love and the one that you want to spend the rest of your life with. So congratulations to any of you girls that are watching this that are newly engaged. This is my um, series. I'm going to take you along the way to my journey on wedding planning and everything that is involved with it as soon as you say yes. <laughs> so as you can see in the intro, I showed you my um, engagement ring. I got engaged in August of 2014 and we are planning to get married in the fall of 2015. So we're super excited. A lot of things go into planning. So as soon as you know, you um, get engaged, there are a few things that you need to start thinking about. So this um, video is going to be pretty much telling you the steps that you need to do um, and what you should be solidifying right away. So you got engaged. Yay, you go and tell your family and your friends. And of course, everybody's going to ask you the one question. When is the wedding? So definitely the first thing you need to do is figure out a date of when you want to get married. If you're going to be getting married within the next year, like within 12 months or less, you have a lot of planning to do. If it's past 12 months, you have some time to figure out what you want to do. So the first thing that we did is we set our date. The second thing we did is we figured out what kind of ceremony we wanted. Did we want an outdoor ceremony? Were we looking to have something at a church? Did we want to do something in, in one of our family members backyard? So we were kind of thinking about that. So that's the first, that's one of the things you need to figure out. Um, for us, we wanted to do an outdoor ceremony, but we're getting married in the fall and the weather here in Southern Ontario is iffy in the fall. It, there's you know, it could rain, you know, and I didn't want to be stressed out that day if it rained because then you have to have a backup plan. And I'm not really good with last minute changes, especially when it's a big event like your wedding. So um, we decided to uh, have a church ceremony and it's going to be not like not a huge long uh, religious ceremony it's going to be more of a spiritual ceremony so we've chosen a church for our um, to, to exchange our vows I really really wanted to do outdoors because we have some beautiful beautiful parks my cousin got married last year and she had hers out in a park exactly the location that we were going to choose but then a couple things I didn't want to go and do that the same thing that she did because she just did it and then I'm I'm a worry wart she had a backup plan that if it rained uh, she would have tents but for me I didn't want to have to um, deal with that because I don't do well with that kind of stuff so we decided to do a church the second thing you have to figure out is where you're gonna have a reception are you gonna have a reception you're gonna have to figure out the size that you want how many people um, do you want at your reception where would you like it Will the place that you want to have it at will hold the amount of people you want to invite? So the first and foremost thing is you need to set a budget. You need to figure out how much you want to spend for your wedding, especially if you're going to be involving other people that are going to help you out with the wedding. Personally, Brian and, our, and myself are paying for our wedding on our own, and we didn't involve any of our family for support with that because we wanted to be able to just pay for it on our own. And so we had to figure out what kind of budget we wanted to set forth in order to be able to pay for it. Because the worst thing that you can do is start a marriage and have tons of debt and loans to pay off because you had this $75,000 wedding and now you have the bill to pay for it. it for us, it was about, and it is about the day. We want to be surrounded by our loved ones, but um, we are going to do an elegant affair, but we're keeping it very um, quaint and intimate. So that's another thing. You, when you're setting out how many people you want at your wedding, do you want something lavish? Do you want something rustic? Do you want it something 
um, elegant, like timeless. Like it's up to you, but you should have a theme. Set up a theme. Start doing Pinterest. Start getting inspirations from blogs out there. Go to your local, um, if you have, and I'm sure most cities have this, bridal shows. Luckily for me, there was a bridal show uh, shortly after we got engaged. So we went to the fall bridal show and we got some inspiration. We got to meet a lot of the vendors. That's where you get to see the cake people. You get to see photographers, invitation people, venue people, decor, wedding planning, transportation, all that kind of stuff that encompasses your day. Then you can pick and choose and, and get people that, one, you have a good relationship and you have a good rapport with because this is your special day. This is, you want people, you're letting people into an intimate day of your life. So you want to make sure that you're going to have a good connection, especially with your photographer, um, your florist, that kind of thing. So, um, attend as you know attend your local bridal show and I, I think that local is the best way to go because this way you get to meet the vendors that are easily accessible to you I live close to like I live about an hour and a half away from Toronto so if I could have gone to a Toronto wedding show but then I would have had to pay extra for somebody from Toronto for the traveling costs and you know especially if you keep trying to keep within a budget you have to take everything into consideration so you're getting your theme. So you got, you're going to plan your ceremony, your reception, how many people, your budget, the type of theme, your inspiration. So around 12, if you're at the 12 month, nine to 12 month time frame, that's the stuff you need to think about. Now, if you're anything like me, you want to be organized. So what I did to keep myself organized is... I went to the dollar store and I got myself a file folder. This thing is fabulous. So it has different sections with little tabs and I put down the labels for each tab. So my photographer, my transportation, any kind of decor that we purchased, I'm keeping all the receipts because I wanna make sure that I keep myself and Brian and I keep ourselves in check when we're figuring out what we're paying for. And you should, allocate certain amount to certain things for us the biggest thing is the food because people will remember the food we want to make sure that the venue is beautiful the ceremony is beautiful the dress everything is beautiful but we want to have really really good food that's very important to us so we put a good chunk of our budget towards that and of course your photographer your photographer is something that you're going to want to invest in because these are images that you're going to want to keep for the rest of your life. If you choose to have a videographer, that's another expense that you might want to consider because, you know, they do same day video editing, which is beautiful. My cousin had that at her wedding and it was gorgeous. Brian and I have decided not to do a video. We're just going to um, you do our phot photographs and then we're going to do a beautiful album. That's what, how we chose to go, the route that we chose to go. And as far as inspiration, get yourself some bridal magazines. I got these at the bridal show. When you attend a bridal show, you pretty much will get a lot of complimentary things, a lot of coupons for discounts. So I, I strongly urge trying to attend your bridal shows because you do get discounts when you go to um, use the vendors that are at those shows. For instance, um, for the tuxedos, Brian got a really good discount for the, the, the guys in our party, wedding party for their tuxedos because he, we attended the show. So another thing that you're going to want to figure out is who do you want in your wedding party? So it's a good time to ask those loved ones on your special friends, family, whoever you decide to have in your wedding party. This is the time that you should ask them to be in the wedding party. I Pinterest a whole bunch of things um, showing how I should ask, like at, figuring out how I should ask my bridesmaids to be in my wedding party. I wanted to do something different. I just didn't want to say, hey, you want to be in my wedding party? So I'm going to link some photos below of how I got some inspiration and what I did to ask my maid of honor, who is my sister. She's going to be my maid of honor. And then my three nieces are going to be my bridesmaids.
Personally for us, we are having a very small intimate uh, reception, but at the ceremony, we're going to be inviting extended family and friends to come to the ceremony. And then we're having a little uh, dessert reception after the ceremony, just to have just to be able to mingle with those that are coming to the church and then we're going to go take photographs and then we're going to go to our reception venue which literally i'm going to have 24 people <laughs> are invited to our reception we wanted to make sure that what we were looking for was something very intimate and uh, we are just inviting our immediate family i have um a couple of my best friends that are going to be coming that I've known since childhood and that is it everybody else extended cousins aunts uncles they've been invited to the ceremony so this was big it was a big decision for us because we both come from big families I come from an Italian family he's he comes from a big family so you know you're gonna disappoint people regardless of what you decide to do but this is your day and you have to remember that that's your day. And if you want to do something small and intimate, then don't let anyone sway you, sway you in a different direction because ultimately you may regret that. I'm not saying you're going to regret it, but you could regret that decision. For us, we've stood firm on what we're gonna do. We're excited about it and we have a beautiful venue set for our dinner. It's exactly what we wanted. And I'm gonna go more into all that later on. But this video is just an intro video, letting you know what you need to solidify at the early stages of your uh, planning. If you're gonna have transportation, that's another thing. Do you want a limo? Do you want old fashioned cars? Are you gonna take your own cars? How are you gonna get to the venue, the ceremony for the wedding party and such? So that's something that you need to consider and also budget. Transportation is extremely expensive. It's not cheap to rent limos. We actually ended up getting a SUV bus like it's one of those Mercedes uh, party buses and it's all black it's beautiful it's leather interior and it's got like a like a horseshoe interior for seating and you have it's got a full bar so that's something you're gonna want to think about too if you have a dress in your wedding dress and even for the bridesmaids if you have a poofy dress with a lot of um, you know if it's a big dress <laughs> You want to be able to get in and out of the car easily. And sometimes when you get a limo, it's difficult to do that. So like a stretch limo. So, and plus we wanted to be with our wedding party. We wanted to, you know, be able to celebrate the day with the wedding party when we're going for pictures and, and everywhere. So uh, we decided to go this route so we could in, have a good time with the people that we chose to be in the wedding. So we decided to go with an SUV bus. And I'll, I'll throw a picture in here so that you guys can get an idea of what that looks like. And then you're going to want to figure out who you're going to have to do to perform your ceremony. Are you going to go with a clergyman or officiant? That's something that perhaps um, you're going to need to figure out and and uh, do some research. And also, um, you know, we interviewed three people like for everything that we wanted, like photographer, uh, limo, clergyman, everything that we wanted. We all we got and we interviewed three people, cake people. We did that as well interview for the cake we we tried three and i'm going to do a separate video on just those components but these are all things that you need to think about um so i think caterer if your venue doesn't have a caterer on site like mine does but some places are just a hall and they may not have a caterer you're going to have to consider figuring out who's going to do your food another thing that you're going to think about is a wedding planner are you going to hire a wedding planner to help you out with that day? If you have a big wedding, that might be something you want to consider because the day of, you don't want to be worried about little small details. You want someone else to handle those details. For me personally, with the small amount that we have, I've Brian and I have planned everything and we've done all the details ourselves. We've worked with our venue as well as our florist to make sure that they're going to set up the 
the venue site for us. And then I've got some family members that are helping out with some other stuff. So for me, I didn't really need a wedding planner, but had I gone the big route where I was gonna have two to 500 people at the wedding, sorry, my camera died on me, but what I was saying is, had I gone, had Brian and I decided to have a big wedding, we would have definitely just had a wedding planner because I stress out about the littlest things and you want your details to be taken care of, so definitely that would have been a great investment had we gone with the big wedding. Since we're having a small, intimate wedding, we don't need that service, so we pretty much, like I said, have handled that all on our own. So basically I've got a little cheat sheet here saying the things that you should um, be considering. Also you might want to be considering a honeymoon if you're going to be doing a honeymoon. Make sure you, you include that in your budget. Include in your budget every little thing that pertains to your wedding. The dress, the shoes, the makeup, the hair, the gifts for the wedding party. That should all be part and parcel of your budget. So that is what I would say um, are some of the things that you're going to need to consider at the beginning of your, you know, process of planning. Um, we pretty much have everything complete. We have uh, the venue, we've got the church, we've got the officiant, we've got, I already got my dress, I've got the girls dresses. So I'm going to do segments along the way so that, um, you know, it will be more in depth on those particular things. But this is just, like I said, what you need to do at the beginning of your planning stages. So I will actually have a link below for any of you that are interested or planning a wedding that you want that timeline. I will have a link below to a timeline for your reference. It does make it so much easier when you are organized. Believe me, trust me, <laughs> you don't realize all the little things that you need to do. Um, decor, that's another thing I should tell you. Um, we purchased all of our own decor and I bought stuff that I would be able to use afterwards in the house, but um, I wanted the table to be set up beautifully. Like um, I've got a very elegant, um, our theme is very elegant, kind of like a Gatsby theme, I would say, um, is pretty much my theme. Um, very elegant and timeless and it's just absolutely beautiful. I, I just like get shivers when I think about how beautiful that our, my venue and everything is going to be. I'm, I'm super excited. So that's something that you're going to have to consider too into your budget is your decor. How are you going to de decorate your ceremony and your reception. Are you going to use flowers? Are you using candles? Are you using balloons? Are you going to do a combo of everything? Then you need to make sure that you have to hire a decorator. So there are a lot of things. So again, I'm going to put a link below on the timeline and I hope you girls liked this. I um, will be like updating you as things progress. So that is my video on what you should be thinking about when you first get engaged and what I've started to do and what I've done so I will be having a, um, some more updates for you girls um, in the upcoming months and weeks just to fill you in on different aspects of the wedding so hopefully you found this interesting I hope you did if any of you are newly engaged congratulations I wish you all the very best this is a really exciting time it can be overwhelming so make sure the key is to be organized and do things in sections so hopefully some of my tips have helped you out Check the down bar below. I'll have more information for you. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching and ciao for now.